Hello and welcome back to the 23rd episode of Greek Speaks. This week we are talking about Bella Foron, who is a hero that I am lukewarm about. I'm sorry for the time cut between the Jason and the Argonauts video and the Hercules video. I had some stuff come up with a friend of mine. And I can make excuses, but I just didn't make this priority and I'm sorry about that. This week we are talking about Bella Foron. Basically, Bellophoron is either the son of Poseidon, the second horniest to Zeus, or just a full mortal son of a king. He's working for this king named Proteus, and his wife, Antia, there's a couple different names they go by, decides, oh, he's really cute. I'm going to try and seduce him, and Bellophoron is not about that life. It is very, very, very frowned upon in the ancient world to sleep with your hosts spouse, meaning usually wife, because, you know, misogyny. And so Belafouron rejects her. The wife goes to the king and says, hey, Belafouron tried to sleep with me. I want you to kill him. And Proteus is not happy about this because in the guest host relationship, you're not supposed to kill your guest. It's pretty genuinely frowned upon. So Proteus sends his, sends Belafouron to his father-in-law that lives in Lycia, which is like South Greece, I think. He stays, Belfaron stays with this guy for a couple days. Oh, Proteus sends a letter, sends a letter with Belfaron. And so it's been a couple days. The new king finally asks for the letter that Belfaron brought. And in the note, it says, hey, kill this dude. And again, it's ran upon to murder your guest. The king, you know, goes up to Belfaron and says, Hey, uh, would you like to help murder this monster in the land and Belafon being a Greek hero? It's like, yeah, sure, let's do that. But, you know, enthusiastically. And so the king says, hey, there's this animal named the Chimera. It is a third lion, a third goat, and a third snake. So it has a lion's front half, goat's back half, and a snake as a tail. What animal this is based off, I don't know. Um, so Belaforon's like, great, I have no idea how to kill this thing. And goes and sleeps in Athena's temple and gives, and Athena appears to him in a dream, which is very, very common. The gods would often appear to heroes in dreams and says, here, here's this bridal and you're going to need the Pegasus. Now I mentioned Pegasus in the Mercy of Medusa video because Medusa gives birth to Pegasus and his brother Cryastor after Perseus cuts her head off. And so the he Pegasus is the child of Medusa and Poseidon. Belhoron takes the bridle and goes to this spring, and Pegasus usually, you know, when he, he stomps his hoof on the ground, a spring pops up. And Belhoron is able to slip the bridle, bridle over Pegasus' head, and it becomes his steed. Also, interestingly, Belafouron and Pegasus might be siblings, because if they're both children of Poseidon, Greek mythology is super weird, if you couldn't tell already. Anyway, so they go find the Chimera, and Belafouron realizes that he can't kill it. It breathes fire, he can't get close enough to do any damage. So he goes, okay, you know, leaves the Chimera, and then he gets a ball of lead and shoves it on the end of a spear and goes back. So with this long range weaponry and the Pegasus, Bellahorn is able to stick his spear in the Chimera's mouth and when she breathes fire, it melts the lead and chokes her. So, yeah, he has an adventure with the Amazons um, at one point and I don't, I don't think that's ever written about, it's just, it, it's mentioned that he has a thing with the Amazons. It's just mentioned because it's another, I, in the, the versions I've read, it's it's another way for Iobates, the, the kings, to try and kill him. You know, I think eventually the king just is like, okay, obviously you can't be killed, here's my other daughter in marriage, just fine. And eventually, uh, Belafouron gets a little too big for his britches, as Greek heroes tend to do. Hubris is a huge theme of Greek mythology. Um, both in classical history and the mythology. And eventually Belforon gets into his head that he deserves to be amongst the gods and tries to fly up to Olympus on Pegasus. And Zeus is not happy about that because 
you know, if you're mortal, you stay in the mortal realm. If you're an immortal, you can do whatever you want, pretty much. So Zeus sends a gadfly to sting Pegasus, Pegasus and uh, he, you know, rears. Belhoron falls to the earth and either dies or is permanently wounded, but his life as a hero is over. Uh, and Pegasus flies off and is part of Zeus's stable and carries Zeus's lightning bolts. I don't love Belafouron. He's always kind of just seemed like a wuss to me. Just kind of like, I don't know, he's never been like the biggest, baddest Greek hero to me for some reason. I don't want to say he's a wuss, but I don't know. With Hercules and Perseus, you get a bunch of backstory and a lot of like stuff like that and, and a tragic backstory. And so, Again with Theseus and to Jason to a degree, and Belafouron is just kind of like he happened into being this hero, and he doesn't really found anything. He doesn't really do anything great with his hero status. But yeah, that is Belafouron. I'm sorry for a little shorter episode, but with the 25 minute long Hercules episode, I thought it would be great for my mental health. You just do a little short one and still get it up. But um, as always, if you have any myths you want me to look at in particular, leave it down in the comments below, and I will see you next week.